Hello everyone, my name is Patrick Enfak. Uh, I'm glad to present our work at uh, SACTLM. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't make it to present uh, in person. So uh, the title of the paper is Learning Fair Representation Through Uniformly Distributed Sensitive Attributes. The outline, I will start with the background, give some context and motivation of our work, and so present the methods, then um, our experiment and the results. And finally, we conclude with uh, the future work. So <clears throat> the increased use of machine learning uh, to make decisions in high stake uh, scenarios has raised uh, concern uh, about their fairness. In particular, in cases where people's lives can be uh, impacted, such as uh, being granted a loan or no, being accepted uh, uh, for a particular school or being released from jail or no. Therefore, it is important to make sure that uh, those decisions are not flawed or, or, or exhibit some discriminatory patterns. The data we collect to make decisions may contain protected uh, attributes or protected information, such as the race, the gender, the nationality, and so on. And uh, models that we build can rely on those uh, sensitive information to make, uh, make decisions. However, a uh, protected attribute should not be used as a basis for decision making. And this is enforced either by conventions or law, such as the US uh, Housing Act. So we consider a situation where we have a data set, let's say X, and a sensitive attribute, for example, gender or race, and a target variable. So basically, we are interested in classification problem. So if you build a classifier from X, <coughs> It is considered fair if its predictions, let's say y hat, is independent from the sensitive attributes, right? This means that uh, regardless whatever the sensitive attribute of people are, the outcome of the model should be the same. And this is what we call a statistical parity or demographic parity. So it is shown that simply dropping the sensitive attribute from the feature space uh, does not help because they may exist other features that are correlated with the uh, sensitive attribute. And in some cases, those features are unknown. There's the famous example of using, uh, dropping the risk from the data set while, people, while using the zip code. And people uh, from the same origin tend to live in the same neighborhood. And this happens that the uh, zip code will act as a proxy to the sensitive attribute and the model will still be using uh, this attribute to make decisions. So we consider our objective is to learn a representation that we call a fair representation, such that uh, this representation is independent from the sensitive attribute. We mean that it does not encode any information about this uh, sensitive attribute. It is a more principled way uh, than just dropping the sensitive attribute from the input feature. There's one important constraint here is that uh, the learn representation should maintain the predictive power of uh, of the data. So for our target task. And in some cases, it should also uh, uh, produce some reconstruction of the original input. <clears throat> so uh, some uh, related work have addressed this problem uh, using our adversary approach where well, we basically have a generator part. Here we have a tone coder and a classifier and an adversary. So the goal of the generator part is to defeat the adversary in predicting, predicting the sensitive attribute. So the idea is that if uh, this adversary cannot predict the sensitive uh, attribute from the course produced by the autumn coder or the encoder and the classifier. Therefore, we can say uh, this latent space does not encode this uh, such information. Similar in, in this other work where the adversary is called here the critic. However, this adversary setup is first difficult to converge because it's very unstable and it is hard to find the uh, right set of hyperparameters that will help the models to learn and converge. And the, there's another assumption that this adversary will have the guarantee only when the adversary is optimum. Uh, it, it, is far, it is hard to find this uh, optimum adversary. <clears throat> and sometimes this approach is even uh, counterproductive. So 
our goal here is to learn fair representation without relying on uh, adversary approach while preserving beta or similar uh, fairness accuracy trade off. So, the idea is that we would like to enforce the uniformity of predicting S from Z. This is, we want this conditional to be as close uh, to 0 0.5 as possible when S is a binary case. So, thus, by making this enforcing this uniformity, we are basically making the prediction of S from Z uh, unreliable. So now we'll present our method. <clears throat> As I said earlier, we do not want to try to defeat an adversary, but we would like to enforce uh, the uniformity of this, this sensitive attribute prediction from the latent space. So how this works, if we achieve this goal, this means that predicting S given Z is quite almost uh, uniform or uh, exactly uniform. Since we're going to use Z to train a classifier, let's say here it's F, uh, <clears throat> on the upstream task, since Z is independent from S, so we are also sure that on the upstream task, the outcome will be independent from the sensitive attribute. Therefore, we will say that we have achieved <clears throat> uh, demographic parity. So how to inform, enforce this uniformity? The intuition here is that, uh, we would like to increase the uncertainty of predicting S from Z. So how we know that noise is um, a good way to, to have uncertainty in the predictions in neural network. So we leverage a uh, noisy label space by randomly flipping the sensitive attribute of, uh, of, of people or individuals uh, during the training. How we do that, here we have our architecture. We have a triple loss here. We have an auton call the path, and then we have uh, a, a network head that predict the target task. And then we have another network head that we call here our regularizer. So this regularizer is the is here to enforce the uniformity of this latent space. How we do that? We uh, during epochs, what we do is that instead of training this regularizer head on the ground through S, we we'll train it on a noisy version of S. So during the training, what we do is that we compute the cross entropy between the predicted S and a noisy version of X, where uh, some samples, uh, the values were flipped with the probability T. By doing so, we are making sure that this regularization, we enforce our latent space to be unreliable when it comes to predicting uh, the sensitive uh, attribute. How? Like a question that may have not may occur is that can neural networks fit data with noisy label space? The answer is yes. I shown in this work and other works that <coughs> neural networks can fit uh, uh, data with partially noisy or completely noisy uh, labels. So for that's what we leverage here to uh, achieve our goal. So as a consequence. If we train a neural network on this noisy label space, what will happen is that the learn model will de degenerate, right? And then it will never uh, generalize well on clean label space. So our regularizer head here enforces the generalization of this, of predicting the sensitive attribute from the learned representation. So basically, if we have a model where we want to predict on clean label space, it will uh, create the separation between the two classes uh, in, in in this case. But by training on the uh, noisy label space, we notice that in the latent space, everything is entangled. So basically training on noisy label space enforces the entanglement of the representations uh, when it comes to this uh, sensitive attribute. We also show that uh, if we realize at multiple levels, we can even uh, improve the performances further. Here, the intuition is that uh, different layers of the neural network uh, can encode different informations. So therefore, if we regularize uh, this level in a hierarchical fashion, we show that this further improves the performances. But regarding our flipping process, we show theoretically that uh, our process actually enforces the network to uh, get the prediction of the sensitive attribute close to the uniform distribution. For that, we show that this optimization problem is an upper bound to the Colbert label divergence between uh, the conditional P of S given Z and the uniform distribution. And that you have this problem in the paper where we basically uh, prove that 
but just here we consider a, a, a not a general case, but where we assume that our flipping process follows a Bernoulli and our sensitive attribute also follow the Bernoulli. So the cross entropy between the ground truth and the flipped version is just an upper bound to the carry diversion. So by minimizing this, we are trying to push the this conditional toward the uniform distribution. Regarding the experiment and the result, we experiment on two data sets, the adult uh, data set and the German credit data set. Those are benchmark uh, what we use in uh, fairness. For the first data set, basically predict if um, individuals' income is greater than uh, 50,000 uh, US dollar per year, or the German credit data set where we basically classify account holders as good or bad accounts. So we use gender here as a sensitive attribute in both data set. All components of the model were implemented using um, general perception, and then we uh, use a logistic regression model as task from task. This means uh, we train the classifier uh, from uh, the representation that we learn. So the model that we use, we consider as baseline, uh, a logistic regression model trained without any fairness constraints. We also consider uh, auto colors here just to see the impact of the compression. Uh, if this also helps to reduce uh, the influence of uh, sensitive attributes. And then you have other methods such as correlation removal, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> where it basically tries to, to find a projection in the way to reduce the correlation between the features. We have adversary based approach as I presented. Another approach that uses uh, the adversary base, but here it uses uh, watch and distance instead of the uh, the cross central pillars as uh, the adversary loss. So, uh, again, the results we analyze the learned representation that we have. <clears throat> so, what we notice here is that in our uh, in our architecture, when we train our laser heads to enforce the real uh, sensitive attributes, we see that if we project our data set into two dimensions and plot them uh, uh, in 2D, we see that there's a separation between uh, these the sensitive attributes. So training on the ground truth enforces this separation. But when we train on the noisy label, we see that there's this entanglement in the latent space. Right? And if we compare to other approaches, such as adversary-based approach, we see that we are basically uh, aiming to the same goal. So here we can see that our method and other are, are providing the same um, level of entanglement in the latent space. So regarding the result, what we do is that we compare the accuracy of predicting uh, Y, this is the target task, and the accuracy of predicting the sensitive attribute. So we see that our method here has uh, better or similar performances compared to existing approach. Of course, here the linear regression is uh, ha uh, has a higher performance because there is no uh, sensitive attribute, uh, there is no fairness constraint there. And uh, the prediction of S here, the goal is to make it as uh, as uh, inaccurate as possible this just to uh, to check how much information is still encoded in the learned representation so we see that our method is also providing less performance smaller performance when it comes to reconstruct s or to predict it using a logistic regression model regarding fairness performances we can see on german data set that our model provides better fairness what is interesting here is that we aim at enforcing statistical parity, but this had a positive impact on other metrics such as equal last halt and, 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 um, and equal opportunities. So on both data set, we were able to achieve a similar or better results. So if you compare in terms of trade-off, we can say that our method provided a better trade-off than uh, existing approaches. So we also evaluate the hierarchical regularization so that if we have two layer uh, two layer perception, by realizing only one layer, we achieve this uh, accuracy and this other fairness metric. So we see that if by regularizing further at like multiple level, this can further improve the performances so uh, of, of, of the, the model. And then we also check that the adversary in the previous uh, Assessments we use uh, just a logistic regression of adversary that we try to predict or to reconstruct the sensitive attribute. So here, by using a stronger adversary such as a neural network, we see that our model is still 
not able to encode much information about the target um, uh, the, the sensitive attribute. So even the stronger adversary cannot accurately reconstruct the sensitive attribute. While we can see preserve uh, uh, slightly better uh, performances uh, uh, um, uh, uh, from the model. <clears throat> so in ablation study, we study the effect of the flipping probability, where uh, which in batches we randomly flip the sensitive attribute of certain individuals. We can see that. Uh, the accuracy is, uh, does not vary much, but we can uh, use it as a as hyperparameter that can be tuned. So here we see that 0 0.5 is the point where we achieve uh, better fairness properties. So depending on the data set, maybe a different probability will be uh, will be better. So now I will conclude. So in this work, we have provided presented a straightforward approach to learn the representation. We use the idea of increasing the uncertainty of predicting the sensitive attribute from the latent space by leveraging a uh, noisy label space. Our method provides fast convergence than adversary approach in this sense that it's more stable as we just have a minimization problem in the tropical loss than a minimax uh, optimization problem. And then you also saw that when we implement uh, Ayashikari, it provides much better performances. <clears throat> Overall, we have uh, Beta fairness accuracy trend off, and we have test, tested the, our method against uh, different adversaries. Uh, and then we see that this method is still robot, robust against adversaries that we use to, to test it. As a limitation, uh, our analytical guarantee of our, our method uh, does not hold for general. Uh, on, for this general conditional, as we assume a Bernoulli distribution. So uh, in the case that it's not a Bernoulli distribution, we cannot conclude that our approach is robust against all futures adversary, and this uh, requires um, further studies in future works. And also we should be able to uh, uh, assess our work when it comes to multiple sensitive attributes. So here we are just dealing with binary and, and and a binary sensitive attribute in a multiple case, it can be multiple value and it can be multiple sensitive attribute at the same time. So how the flipping process will be done in that case, uh, an idea is that you can just uh, randomly uh, permit or change the sensitive attribute of individual by any of the possible value and do it for all the possible features. So this needs to be more explored. And then uh, our method should we, we should also be able to provide fairness guarantee for people involved in the decision making process. If our method is used, what level of fairness guarantee they will provide to uh, to the users? So I would like to thank you for listening, and I will be glad to to hear your questions. Our source code is openly and is available in the paper. So uh, thank you so much, and have a great time. Goodbye.